We surveyed over 600 people on their dating deal breakers. Jeez. Joseph, do you have any dating deal breakers? I know you've been married for like 10 plus years, but... I don't remember even what it's like to even date, to be honest. That's not that even a brag. That's just like... Even the idea yeah. of dating is so foreign to me now. It's been too long. All right. Very honest answer, but kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> Ain't it same. Joseph's always playing the same. He knows his wife listens to this podcast. <laughs> Yo, everyone's my deal breaker when you're married. You know what I mean? Shit. <laughs> Come on, give me something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, and then please. <laughs> my deal breakers are: Are you not my wife? It, yes, that's my deal breaker. That's my one deal breaker. Are you my wife? <laughs> there we go. Wait, what are your deal breakers, Chris? We didn't answer. <laughs> are you purposely omitting that? Mine? Um, <laughs> yes. you know, I'm. I don't have any. I like. I like everyone. <laughs> Um, That's as long word. as they don't watch anime. <laughs> oh, you're my red flag, Obi. Questions we'll answer are, what are the most common deal breakers in dating? And how does it differ by gender, relationship status, and sexuality? All right, methods. We surveyed 602 people on their dating deal breakers. We provided a list of 29 potential deal breakers and asked participants to select all that apply. Participants also provided their gender, sexuality, and relationship status. Okay, top 10 dating deal breakers in order of, you know, strength. So the top dating deal breaker was heavy drinking, 33%. Then it was smoking cigarettes, drug use, dishonesty, being rude or disrespectful to others, poor personal hygiene, public sharing of private matters, excessive social media use, poor communication, and being friends with exes. Interesting. Interesting. Honestly, sp speaking of boring, the first five? <laughs> Hell of boring. Kind of kind of boring. Of, <laughs> kind of boring. He's like, yeah, I mean, you know, my deal breaker, someone's not honest with me. When they yeah, to me. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no Someone shit. That's like dating deal breaker. Doing. They're addicted to crack. <laughs> That's a no. Sorry. <laughs> hard line on hard drugs. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Now the interesting one is public sharing of private matters, excessive social media use. That's interesting. Yeah, and the top five, they I think they're kind of boring because like we all agree with them so it makes yeah. sense that they're at the top right yep 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 yeah <clears throat> people had an average of six deal breakers okay. in that list of 29 oh interesting so they could have picked all 29 if they wanted to yeah oh okay interesting and i define dating deal breaker as that would be um enough of a factor to end a relationship okay that alone mm-hmm Okay, so here are all of the dating deal breakers ranked in order of frequency that they were selected. Okay. So we already went through the top 10, uh, but you can see where all of the others lie on the spectrum. Wow. Okay, here's some interesting ones. Some that we've kind of debated about or had discussions about. Um, outside of the top 10, I'm seeing living with parents. Yeah, twenty-one percent of people selected that as a dating deal breaker. That almost that almost broke the top ten. Um, yeah, uh, having many past relationships. Yeah, how many? Twenty percent of people indicated that. Okay, here's some obvious ones that you I feel like should have been in the top ten. Mismatched political views. I was thinking about that one. Uh -huh. I think. I think when asked in a survey, people like to think that. Oh yeah, you know, I'm open minded. I could I could be with someone <laughs> with different political views than me. But Shut then the in reality, up. that's like like a huge point of contention with like a lot of relationships. And like yeah, yeah, yeah. usually people end up dating people like who align with them in their yeah. political values. Uh so I think people are just like saying like maybe just saying that. They would they would like to think that it's not a deal breaker for them. Right. These are all of course like these responses of course people suffer perception that doesn't account for their actual like how they actually feel like in real life right um well yeah i mean it, it is how they feel like in real life but it's but yeah it, it's self-report so it's sorry it's self yeah they they are like their own judge yeah dating deal breakers men versus women okay okay 
So for this part, I just took the largest differences between them. Oh, okay. So smoking cigarettes was one of the larger differences, whereas okay. that was a bigger, more frequently cited deal breaker for men compared to women. Women yeah. on average had 6.25 or six and a quarter deal breakers. Men have had an average of five and a half deal breakers. So women had more deal breakers. More deal men. breakers. Okay. Yeah. That, that kind of. That that kind of makes sense, yeah. That yeah, well, why is have... that? Um, uh, men are losers, you know. We're just losers, you know. Not as educated. No, no. Be genuine. Be genuine. Be no, honest. No, we're, no, no. We're... Tell us. <laughs> tell us why you think that. Let's hear an honest opinion from you. Okay, this is especially true in heterosexual relationships. Women are usually the ones to pursue, and men are the ones pursuing. And women will have more options of who they can date more compared to men. Is that a fair is that a fair assessment response, Chris? Welcome to Red Pill Papers, where we discuss no! a controversial oh topic that people are too scared to talk about. No! No, it's not! I'm Chris Cole. I have a PhD. No! This is Joseph Taharan. No, no, I don't sign up. I don't sign up on this. I don't sign up on this. <laughs> get a whole different audience. I, I get worried sometimes in our comment section. <laughs> <laughs> please dignify that. Don't say whatever response. Okay. Um, so kind of as you can see, uh, men cared more about smoking cigarettes than women, but then women cared more about all of the others more than men. So public sharing of private matters, excessive social media use, <laughs> being friends with exes, having many past relationships, and all of the others. Uh, women yeah. cared more. Men are hilarious. It's like, hey, as long as she doesn't smoke, I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what this graph is telling me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. She could be on Twitter access. She could be on on uh, on Insta all day. But as long as she doesn't yeah. smoke a cigarette, we're cool. Yep. She could have no ambition, be unemployed, <laughs> be friends with all of her exes, be on social media all day. If she doesn't smoke. She's a keeper. <laughs> yeah. She leaves me on red. She leaves me on red for weeks on end. Yeah. <laughs> She tells everyone's my secrets. <laughs> no, but she doesn't smoke cigarettes, so we're good. She got great breath, though. <laughs> All right. Did you have anything else uh, for your no, slide? No, respond to my thing earlier. <laughs> okay. Um. So moving on. Sidestep that we might have. Oh, cut that shit out. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joseph, don't cut this out. Joseph, don't cut that out. Future that Joseph, a funny if, bit. if it's that funny, funny you keep. For future Joseph, if you watch this back and it's funny, even if it makes it you look funny. a little bad. It was it. funny. We were both we'll, cracking up. People will laugh. Future we'll, we'll Joseph. We'll, we'll, you future will be Joseph laughing, we'll Future Joseph. Future Joseph, we'll see. We'll see, Future Joseph. All right. Now, dating deal breakers, single versus people in relationships. So we broke down the survey results by whether or not they were single or in a committed relationship. Well, can I, can I, can I respond to your question earlier in earnest? Not yeah. that I can think of some deal breakers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something that I don't think was highlighted enough. It's like the ability to compromise. <laughs> that's like that's like a number one deal breaker when you're in a relationship. Like if yeah. you don't have the ability to compromise or be flexible, it can make the relationship so much more stressful for both parties. Uh, yeah. depending on what it is. Chris and I have talked about this before and I've been thinking about this since we've had conversations like these offline. I feel like most things you can actually like be okay with like smoking or whatever like even those things that seem like big deal breakers i feel like those things can be satisfied so long as that the individual that you're partnering with is someone that can self-sustain themselves meaning they have a job that can pay for their bills and stuff at a comfortable level right if they can do that and you're not expected to contribute or at the very least be able to like be interested in your stuff Right, because so you don't have to have similar interests, but if the other person at least like makes an attempt to get interested in what you're interested in, I think that's so important. So that because that means whatever you're interested in, they could be interested in. And finally, like being the having the ability to like negotiate and compromise and talk through things is so important. That's like the number one big thing that I'm surprised that didn't really show up on this list. So, uh, yeah, poor com poor communication was one of the deal breakers. Oh, was um, it? That okay, we saw. I didn't see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm guessing that would fall under that category. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so Joseph, um, the most flexible person I know, 
very okay with dissenting opinions, <laughs> very good on compromising, <laughs> has never had to make an intentional effort to be flexible. He's just naturally <laughs> flexible. That's the Joseph I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. never had to explain that this is the year that he's flexible and yeah. he's going to be open to things mm -hmm. and not push back mm -hmm. as much. <laughs> yeah. People in relationships had an average of five and a half deal breakers. It's kind okay. of on par with like the general population. Okay. People in relationships had five and a half deal breakers on average. Single people had an average of eight and a half deal breakers. Mm. A lot mm. more, significantly more. Mm. Wonder why they're single. I wonder. <laughs> no, don't, don't tag our single listeners. Hey, someone out there loves you. <laughs> All right. So dating deal breakers by relationship status. So I looked at the biggest differences. Dishonesty. Single people were like, that is a huge deal breaker. 64% of single people indicated that. People in relationships were like, eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. Sometimes you... Sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta make the relationship work, you know? <laughs> Honestly, some things I don't wanna know. Keep it to yourself. Ignorance is bliss. One hundred. Yep. Shit. As you can see, single people just had more deal breakers just oh. overall. So single people cared more about like heavy drinking, drug use, and being rude or just disrespectful to others, whereas people in relationships were a little more like, eh. <laughs> we 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 make each other drink. You know? <laughs> hey, I get it. It works. Hey, I get it. You know what, it well, works for us. I'm an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic. Okay, well, well, drinking here. I'm surprised poor communication is not as high as I thought it should be. I think for people in a relationship, um, yeah. that should be high, much higher. Yeah. No. Yeah. Honestly, can I say something about this specific list we're seeing right here? Almost every one of these things are like so trivial to me. <laughs> maybe with exception. Maybe yeah. Even like, I mean, like some dishonesty is fine. Honestly, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> some some dishonesty is fine. You don't yeah. have to be truthful all the time. Heavy drinking and drug use. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. I feel like and then being yeah. rude or disrespectful to others. Wait, Joseph, what explain what you meant? Or poor <laughs> poor personal hygiene? These are all pretty big. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. These are things that you can learn and figure out. And you know, if I communicate to you and I I think the thing I'm looking for is are you willing to improve this thing or the try, make the attempt to. You know, it doesn't have to be an absolute change overnight, but if you have the desire to change, why not? You know? So they could be a lying, crack-addicted alcoholic <laughs> that's an asshole to everyone and that is just dirty and just never cleans themselves. But hey, if you have a goal to improve, Joseph, we'll date you. Hey, man. Yeah. That's, See, that's the relationships are about attitude, baby. It's all about attitude. Yeah. Dating deal breakers by sexuality. Okay. So again, I broke, I broke it down by sexuality, and I just looked at the biggest differences between them. So really quick, straight people had an average of six deal breakers. Homosexual people had an average of 5.9. Okay. And bisexual people had an average of five deal breakers. Okay. How significant, Chris, is if the average is down by one? Um, is that pretty significant, you think, in relative to yeah. this? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that would probably be statistically significant. Yeah. Okay. 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 Dating deal breakers by sexuality. So you can see heterosexual people were cared a lot. Uh, heavy drinking was a frequently cited deal breaker for them. Yeah. Much more than homosexual or bisexual people. Same with drug use. And if you're bi, you're, you're, you're like, you're pretty chill about stuff. Is I mean, that I guess just by definition, if you're bi, you have less deal breakers, right? Uh, yeah, I guess you're more flexible, huh? Yeah. Like more open. Yeah. It seems like for the straight deal breakers, it's kind of more traditional. Like, I don't want someone that drinks a lot, does drugs. I, I you know, I want them to be clean, you know. Um that's like kind of more traditional like caricatures or archetypes of mm. someone that they might want to date. Um, whereas 
homosexual or bisexual might be more interested or or concerned with maybe like being friends with exes mm -hmm. or poor communication. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hot takes here? Um, straight people are boring, man. That's super boring with the responses. I gotta say. Yeah, do more drugs and drink more alcohol. Yeah, Come man. On. Jeez, Louise, live it up. Joseph, can you uh, read these out for us? Sure. Yeah. So the dating deal breaker summary. People have an average of six deal breakers. Top dating deal breakers, heavy drinking, smoking cigarettes, and drug use. Women have more deal breakers than men. Single people have a lot more deal breakers than people in relationships. And straight people have more deal breakers than homosexual and bisexual people. I don't know what to think, because I, I was hoping you did this study, and I'm really glad you did, because now we can reference this in our, in, our, in our own conversations. I'm a little disappointed when people are prioritizing, but at the same time, it's like, I, I get it. The top five makes so much sense to yeah, me. Yeah, I though. get it. I get it. In the bottom five, that also kind of makes sense. Like mismatched hobbies and interests, like that should be the lowest. That should be introversion, the extroversion, mismatch. That should be the lowest too. But not wanting, not wanting children. That should surprising. be surprising. Yeah, that should be yeah. a little higher. If you're still listening, thank you so much. Chris, Mike went out, so now you can hear my wonderful voice. Cut that out. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Continue though. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>